Hey, Dr. Deb Matthew here, president of the North Carolina Integrative Medical Society. I am so excited about our upcoming conference, the Southeast Regional Integrative Medical Conference, which <laughs> is going to be in August in Asheville. We're so happy to be back in person, and I would like to introduce you today to one of our speakers. Dr. David Friedman is not just a doctor, he's also a comedian, and he has a way of explaining the information in a really entertaining way, which makes it fun. But really importantly for us, he is a wealth of knowledge about how food and the food industry affects our health. So I'm gonna turn it over to you to just give us a little taste of what we can expect in August. Yeah, I'm excited about the conference in August. I'm gonna share the evolution of obesity. In the United States, the weight loss and diet control market brings in a whopping $72 billion annually. And think about it, we have access to more gyms and diet books and weight loss programs, fat burning shakes and all those diet supplements than ever in history. Those expensive programs out there, you got Jenny Craig, you got Weight Watchers, Nutrisystem, they've never been more popular. But in spite of all of this, 73% of Americans remain overweight or obese. And for those of you that do manage to lose weight, the results are usually only temporary. In fact, over 80% of the people that successfully lose weight regain every pound lost or more within a year. And you know, every day in my clinic, people come in all, all the time. And, and you know what they do? They blame their weight problems on genetics. They believe their excess weight is a result of their family tree and they were simply, quote, born to be fat. Well, at the upcoming conference, I'm gonna shatter this myth by presenting evidence proving your genes have nothing to do with why you can't fit into your genes. Genetics is not to blame for the obesity epidemic, not at all. Uh, if you just look, for example, look at the old black and white family portraits from the late 1800s and the early 1900s, and you'll often find four generations sitting together. They all have something in common besides not smiling. They're always frowning, but they were thin. <laughs> hey, why aren't they smiling? They're all thin. Wouldn't we all be smiling more if we didn't have ex excess weight, but they were all frowning. They were never smiling in those pictures but they weren't overweight. In fact, in the year 1900, only 3.4% of people were considered obese or overweight. Now, when you look at family portraits today, it's difficult to find a family member who's not overweight. So if your great grandparents didn't have a weight problem, how can you blame them for your weight problem? It's easy to point finger at food. That's what we do, right? We always say, oh, it's all, it's the food to the blame. Well, if that's true, how can we explain our thin great grandparents that gob butter on their white bread, they poured sugar all, all over their oatmeal. Back then, think about it, they cooked with lard, they drank heavy cream milk, they ate lots of pasta and ice cream. And you know, the decades between the year 1900 and 1930, we saw the candy bar boom, which produced things like Hershey's chocolate bar, Baby Ruth came to fruition, O. Henry, Reese's, and the big most popular candy bar of today, Snickers, started back then. Well, while all of these foods I just mentioned, they're popular today, and what are they? They're blamed on weight gain. Well, yes. how, how did our great-grandparents eat them and remain thin? Can we really blame the food? Some experts say, oh, obesity epidemic, it's due to a lack of exercise. They exercised more, we don't exercise as much. Really? 72 million people, people go to the gym annually in the United States and 100 million people work out at home. So people are exercising, but regardless of these efforts, the majority, what? They still remain Sorry. overweight. Here's why. Exercise actually stimulates hunger. It causes you to crave more food, makes you eat more, which in turn negates the weight loss benefits of exercise. So you can't outrun your fork. And every uh, expert I've interviewed that's a fitness icon or, or um, you know, the bodybuilding expert on my radio show, they all agree that diet plays much more of a factor. So, you know, don't get me wrong. I think it's great to exercise. It helps the heart. It helps reduce stress. It strengthens the bones. But if you want to lose weight and keep it off, it's very difficult to achieve that goal at the gym. 
So after studying data spanning over a hundred years in my research, I've isolated actually two historic spikes that can be blamed on our current obesity epidemic. And food isn't the issue. It's what's being done to our food during the farming, the storing, and the cooking process. At the conference, I'm going to share hidden chemicals called obesogens that are wreaking havoc on people's hormones. They're sabotaging their weight loss efforts, no matter how much hard they try. You know, those people that just, I do everything and I can't lose the weight. I got lots Obesi of those in my practice. Obesogens, you know, they can change the metabolic set points, they increase appetite, zap your energy, and here's the kicker. Science has proven they actually cause fat growth in the body. Who wants that? We got enough fat cells to begin with. Do we really want to add more? And these chemicals add fat in our body. We used to think we were born with a certain number of fat cells, and scientists found, no, these obesogens create new ones. Yikes. So these chemicals, not just in our food and our packaging and our pots and pans, but they're found in our water. Think about this, Doc. The, the water, it, it contains zero calories, zero sugar, zero fat, but water could be causing weight gain. Water. <laughs> I'm going to share why at the, at, the, uh, at the convention. And there's also endocrine disrupting chemical found in shower curtains that when you heat it, it can contribute to fat production in the body. So think there's about this. Shower can do it. Yeah. So, so think about this. people that are healthy, they eat clean, they eat organic, non-GMO, they exercise regularly, but they still can't lose weight. Their daily hot shower could be a reason who knew <laughs> you're going to clean yourself up and you're gaining weight. I'm going to show you how to avoid that chemical, what it is, how to recognize it. You know, and here's the thing I want to stress being overweight. Isn't about appearance. It can be life threatening. In fact, it's a precursor to so many deadly diseases, including, you know, got diabetes, type two diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and research from the new England journal of medicine shows by the year 2028, one in four Americans will be morbidly obese. That's a hundred pounds overweight. So at this conference in August, I'm going to show you how to keep your patients from becoming one of these statistics. I'm going to show you how to find and avoid these hidden endocrine disrupting chemicals that are sabotaging people's weight loss efforts. And here's the most important part. I'm going to show you how to get rid of them from the body. And I'm looking forward to sharing that and more and hope to see a lot of you there. That's great. And we're really looking forward to it. Thank you so much for your time. Great.